Odie? You ready to go? Come on, let's go! Come on! Welcome to Jeremiah's Fifth Ministries, a place where you can grow in God's Word. Like I said, we're going to be talking about righteousness. Amen. <laughs> you say, that's a big word. Well, yeah, it is a big word, but it's got a great amount of meaning to it. Praise the Lord. Let's go over to Ephesians, uh, the sixth chapter, the 10th verse there. And we're going to look at some things. Now, we're just going to talk a little bit about it today. Uh, we're going to get more into it uh, next week, but we're just going to talk a little bit about a few things today. And, you know, it's important that you understand a few things about righteousness, but you need to have a, a good grasp upon it. And I'm going to, we're going to talk about why here. We're going to talk about a lot of things with righteousness. And so, you know, you might want to get some notes there, write down some things. And if you don't get it the first time, you know, you might uh, listen to it again, download it, listen to it, praise the Lord, give it to someone else if you think they don't understand it, because it's vital to every Christian, praise the Lord, righteousness is, amen. Ephesians 6.10, says, and through, we're going to start there, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Are you strong in the Lord today? Amen. He's, he's, he's telling us, let's be strong in the Lord, Amen. Amen. And you know, I believe even you starting to say that when you get up in the Lord, I'm strong or in the morning to say, I'm strong in the Lord. That helps you so much. Amen. Because your confession's right. Amen. You, you may not feel strong, but you can get up in the morning and go, I feel strong in the Lord. Amen. And the power of his might, you know, that, that says volumes to your body and speaks to your body. Your words affect you. You would not believe. Amen. And you can get up and confess, I'm strong in the Lord this morning. Amen. I believe God's power will keep you strong and keep you living a long life. Or you can get up in the morning and go, oh, I feel terrible. I feel ill. I don't feel good. Oh, Jesus, help me, you know, you know, but you, or you can have a confession that I'm strong in the Lord. Amen. You know, that can change your day. Just by some of the things you say like that, you get up in the morning and go, this is going to be a good day. Amen. This, uh, this is not going to be a challenging day. This is going to be a good day. Me and God, we make a team and this is going to be a great day. Praise the Lord. It has to do with your attitude. Amen. And what you confess when you get up in the morning, you say, well, Jeremiah, that's just the beginning of the scripture. Well, yeah, that's a powerful beginning. Amen. You need to be strong in the Lord every day. You're supposed to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Amen. And if you're not strong in the Lord, you're not going to fulfill God's purpose for your life. You need to say that every day. I'm strong in the Lord. Amen. And the power of his might, praise the Lord. And that's important. Your confession is important. And, it, and it's the thing that'll help you achieve the dreams that you need to fulfill. You know, if you got big dreams and big goals, your confession is going to be so important to you. <laughs> Amen. I like this. I, we have our coffee the confessions like I've been talking about. And I download it at midnight every uh, Sunday night, you know, but you look at some of those confessions. I, I, man, they, those are important confessions, you know. Uh, I'm talking about, there's one of them called, that says, I'm the healed of the Lord. Amen. You know, Jesus already paid for it. He said, by his stripes, we are healed. And so you're calling yourself healed, praise the Lord, before you even begin your, you know, before you even begin your day, if you listen to that in the morning, praise the Lord. You're calling your body healed. Amen. But Or you can say, I feel terrible. <laughs> I don't feel good at all. You know, it, your confession has so much to do with what, where you are. You know, you're where you're at because of what you're saying. And I have a whole series on confession. I, I strongly suggest listening to that if you get a chance to listen to that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So he says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. So he doesn't want you weak. He doesn't want you to be a weak Christian, you know, amen, because he knows that you're going to be facing some things, amen. Some of you, even after you leave this broadcast, the enemy would like to steal the word from you. The Bible says he personally comes to steal the word from you. Why? Because he doesn't want you to achieve your dreams. He doesn't want you to treat, achieve your goals, amen. You know, he, he comes to steal that word right away because he knows once you, you get the word and you start establishing the word in your life, you know, you're going to achieve those dreams and you're going to achieve those goals. But when you first get it, you're still working with it a little bit. And so he wants to stop you right at the beginning, you know. And so he's telling you finally, rather than be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
And that's because there is a spiritual battle going on. Amen. We're going to talk about this. It says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Think about that. Now, he's telling you there is a real devil out there and there is a real war going on. You know, you got up this morning. You didn't realize that, you know, even with you looking outside and see the pretty trees and maybe some places you see the the mountains or you see some beautiful places there or maybe cold where you're at or hot where you're at. You may have got up and just had your coffee this morning and just thought by what you see that there's just certain things going on, you know. But there's a whole lot going on in the spiritual realm that you don't see. Amen. I believe God's doing a lot of good things this year. But there is a war going on. Amen. And we have to be people that are ready for that war. Amen. People that get up prepared. Now, Jesus has already paid for the paid the price and he's already beat the devil. Praise the Lord. But he's also given you responsibility to take authority over that enemy. And he's given you responsibility to, to win against the walls of the devil. He's telling you here to put on that armor. He wouldn't have told you to put that armor on if there wasn't a spiritual battle going on. Amen. You know, and I tell you, it seems like Christians uh, to me, the ones I've talked to, it seems like they're really vague on this sometimes. And, you know, they forget that there is a war going on. You know, they, they just think the enemy's not ever, ever going to give them a challenge. <laughs> He's not ever going to present trouble to you, you know, and I don't like to give him more glory than he deserves, you know, because God will whoop him every time and you'll come through it every time if you'll stand up with the Lord. Amen. But, you know, again, you need to be prepared. Amen. That means you need to understand about that armor and make sure that you're ready to go. Amen. Every day. That doesn't mean just sometimes you pick up the face shield on on Monday, and sometimes you pick up the face shield on Friday, or just Wednesday and Sunday when you go to church, you pick up your faith shield, <laughs> or grab your Bible, and you just you use the Word of God, you know, the sword of the, the Word, you know, use it every day, cutting just on Wednesdays and Sundays, you know. No, that's not how we do things. We have to wear that armor every day, amen? There's a spiritual war going on every day, you know? And I'll tell you, man, sometimes he'll try to attack you as soon as you get up, you know, praise the Lord. And you need to be prepared. You need to be putting on that armor, getting ready for the fight, amen? You know, I, I tell you, he'll, he's, there's a lot less of a fight if you're getting prepared, amen? But, you know, if he doesn't want to come against you when you're prepared. He's not going to win. He's, you've already got the authority over him. You've already got the weapons that God's given you, you know, praise the Lord. But, you know, you got to get up and get prepared. And if you're not ever thinking there's a war going on in the spirit, amen, if you don't think there's ever any challenges going to come your way that day, you know, then you're not going to prepare yourself. And it's important. He told us here that we have to have this armor, amen. And it's because he knew that there was a spiritual fight going on. Paul had some insight on this, that there is a spiritual battle going on, amen. The 12th verse, he says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So he's talking about a whole realm out there that we don't realize there's a war going on, you know. If you were to draw back the curtain today and you saw in the spirit, you would see a war going on. And what it is, it's a war that the enemy is waging against us because he he doesn't want you to accomplish the things that God has for us. Amen. You know, people in heaven, I don't believe they've got this war going on like we do here on earth. And the reason why is because your body's still here. And this is where the enemy is, you know, and your body is so important to fulfilling what God has on this earth. Amen. You're here and you're legally here because of your body. Amen. And, you know, he likes to attack the body. He like he wants to get you to wear out your body. He wants to take all your time. You know, he knows that you only have a certain amount of time on earth and he wants to, he wants to zap that time as much as he can. You know, he, you know, he, you go to heaven. He's not worried about that. He's after your body because of the authority you have on this earth. You know, you know, I mean, you have the authority to pray good things for your nation. You have authority to take, pray good things for your city. You know, and, you know, he's, the scripture talks about that. He will let them now let, you know, basically the Holy Spirit's holding back certain things because we're praying. Amen. He's taking care of certain things because we're praying 
And he doesn't like that. Amen. And there's a spiritual war going on because we're still on this earth. You know, you have a whole lot of authority being on this earth. And so the enemy doesn't like that. And so he wants to stop that at every, every turn. He's trying to stop. That's why he's after you. You know, he knows, you know, if you're blood bought, you're going to heaven. <laughs> Amen. You're going to win no matter what, praise the Lord. He knows that, but it's about your time on this earth. And it's important that you do the things you're supposed to do in, in this time that we have on this earth. Amen. Have you ever sat and thought about your time on earth? It's important to think about that. You have a certain amount of time on this earth. You know, Jesus' ministry was at 30. And then I'm sure he had to think about the time that he has on earth. You know, football players, you know, when you get a quarterback, they want them at a certain age. Or when they get a player, they want them at a certain age so they can they have a certain time. And they know that they're, they're going to be able to play football and fulfill what they're supposed to do playing football, you know, and achieve those things. You don't run as fast at 90, you know. <laughs> you don't run as fast at 80. You don't run as fast at 50, you know. But they know that your your, your abilities are good for that certain time, you know. And you're on this earth and your abilities are from the time that you're born to the time that you you go to heaven. You know, a lot of us, you know, it can be 100, 120. You know, I believe, hopefully, you know, you get to live that long and hope maybe longer. Praise the Lord. But, you know, you have a certain amount of time on earth here. And it's important that you take responsibility for that time and make sure that you do all you can for God with while you're in this earth. Amen. You get to heaven. That's another story. We got a whole nother story in heaven. Praise the Lord. But here on earth is what's really important, what you're going to do here. And you're here not by accident. God's got you here to fulfill that purpose. You're not here for no other reason, but to fulfill a purpose God gave you. You say, well, how do I have a purpose? Why do I have a purpose? Well, God made your spirit in heaven and it was pure, nothing wrong with that spirit. And then you were born into this bo in the body on earth. Amen. Where sin, you know, became a challenge, praise the Lord. And then he had to accept Jesus and he came and recreated your spirit, praise the Lord. And amen. And then he put himself within you so you could fulfill your purpose. Amen. But you know, that's, he put that purpose within you in heaven. Amen. He created you before you even got put in this body. You're not here by accident. Amen. No matter what your family may say, or someone tells you, or you know, just you, you may have been born into a certain family you didn't want to be born into, you know, or maybe you were adopted or whatever the situation is, you know, you're still here with a purpose because God put you on this planet for a reason. Amen. And God wants you to fulfill that purpose. Amen. And your purpose is to help the kingdom grow and minister to people and show love and bring them into the kingdom. Amen. And help them to grow spiritually. Amen. And help them to fulfill their dreams and goals. Your, your purpose is to help other people fulfill their purpose. Amen. Amen. You know, I was listening to somebody uh, the other day and it was really neat. She was, she said that she calls herself the, the dream uh, uh, coach, you know, something like that, you know, and she's a Christian, but that's kind of what we all are. We're dream coaches, people trying to help each other and get where we need to go. And we're supposed to be encouraging each other get, to get where we go. The fivefold ministry, matter of fact, if you look at it, we're supposed to be encouraging each other through those gifts. Amen. And so we're here to encourage each other and be a blessing to help people fulfill their purpose. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm making sure I'm here every Sunday and Wednesday. I'm trying to help you get your dream, help you fulfill your purpose, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I, I could be doing something else, but I, I want to help you. There's something inside me that stirs up when I think about, hey, I want to help you. I want to help you fulfill your dream and your purpose and, and the thing that God has called you to do. Just something with inside me, the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And he encourages me to help you. Amen. Amen. You know, I don't have to be here, but the Lord, if I want to fulfill my purpose, I need to be here. Amen. And I want to be a blessing to you. Amen. I get excited about it. You know, when you have a purpose for God and you're in it, you get excited about it. I'll tell you, it's amazing how you get excited about it. You know, I'll, I'll, get, I'll be feeling bad sometimes before I even get up here. You know, before I even come out to record a, a message or something like that, and all of a sudden it's just like the Holy Spirit just comes over me, comes up on me, and I, man, I'm suddenly just happy to be here. You know, you know, it's amazing, amen. And when you're doing what God's called you to do, there's grace for it, and He helps you to fulfill that purpose. And amen. Well, there's a real war going on out there, a real spiritual war, and it's important that we realize. That, you know, that we're, there's something going on behind the scenes. You're not just sitting there like I am here. It looks like on the camera. Drinking my cup of um, water there. 
Amen. You know, you, you there's a real war going on. Amen. You know, the enemy don't like it when there's a message going out and reaching some people. Amen. Or he, helping people to fulfill their dreams and goals. He liked to take everybody down. But it's important that, you know, you're encouraging others and helping them with their dreams and goals. You know, have you thought about today, has the Lord been dealing to you about calling somebody up, somebody that's hurting and just encouraging, send them an email or send them a text with just a smiley face on there? Amen. Have, are you, have you thought about that? You, you realize that one of those encouraging words may get somebody through a very hard time right now. And one of those encouraging words can help somebody hold their head up and fulfill their purpose today. I don't know how many times God's encouraged me and sent people my way to encourage me. He's even used my wife to encourage me and my son, you know, to encourage me. You know, it's amazing how God will bring someone in your path, you know, when you need encouragement. Then maybe he's dealing with you. Maybe there's somebody he's been talking to you about today. You need to be a blessing to and encourage them. Amen. And so, you know, you need to be listening to the Holy Spirit. We're here to help each other, amen, and be a blessing to those people. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, the Passion Translation talks about it like this. And I'm reading this for a reason because I want you to understand that we're going to, we're studying righteousness because there is a war out there. And this is a very important thing to understand when you're going to battle with the enemy, praise the Lord. Now, my beloved ones, I have saved the most important truths for last. Be spiritually infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Boy, that's good. He infuses inner strength into you. Amen. Maybe today some of you are needing some strength. You know, he, she's, or the, the Passion Translation there is telling you that he'll infuse you with inner strength. You know, maybe today you need to get filled up. Amen. Get some infused with inner strength. Go to God today. Let him infuse you with inner strength to come through the struggle that you're faced with. Boy, I tell you, I've had some challenging times, you know, and the first thing I do in those challenging times is get infused with supernatural strength. Amen. Then, you know, I, there's something about the infusing that God does in his presence. And when he infuses, you can go another 20 miles if you'll just take time and get infused with his inner strength and in his presence. Amen. And, you know, I, I, I tell you, man, that's what makes us different than the world. That's what helps us keep our marriages together. That's what helps us keep our families together. That's what keeps us fulfilling what God's purpose is for our lives is getting that infusion of inner strength. And it's important that you take the time and let him infuse you with inner strength. Amen. Maybe today you need to just spend some time with God. Amen. You know, I was talking to my wife the other day, you know, I was like, hey, you just need to rest. Take a little time and rest. You know, we like to just keep going, <laughs> just keep fighting and fighting, and fighting. And but, you know, it's amazing how you can get so much further if you just get a little rest and infusion of strength into your life. Just a little rest. Amen. You know, you'll think better, clearer, hear your spirit better if you'll rest a little bit. If you'll take a little time and let him infuse some strength into you, praise the Lord. You know, and when he does that, he removes some burdens and some yokes off of you. He, he is, When you're in that joy, the joy of the Lord gives you strength and he'll give you more strength to get going further where you need to go. Praise the Lord. But you have to take time in his presence. Amen. Bathe in his presence. Amen. We just had a heavy rain here, you know. And I mean, it was just raining cats and dogs just a few minutes ago. And then it quits, you know. But, you know, it's amazing how, you know, you can get just drenched in his presence. If you'll take the time and get drenched in his presence, spend some time that way. And you'll get another 20 miles, praise the Lord, easily, you know, with the Lord's help. And, you know, when you're praying like that, you're praying the spirit and you're getting filled with the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord, in his presence, you know. It's amazing how you're praying out some things that need to be prayed. And a lot of things will fix themselves if you'll take some time and just pray like that for a little while. And just take, you know, because you're, you're struggling and you're going through the challenges that you're going through, you know. But if you just take some time and let him infuse that strength in you, the joy of the Lord will help work some of those things out because now you're you're flowing in his joy, you know, and you're keeping happy and you're not all stressed, you know, and and the, and the, the things just work themselves out when you spend time with the Lord. Amen. And you spend some time in his presence, you know, uh, you know, just having joy. You'd be surprised how many things work themselves out, you know. Because the enemy's after your joy, you know, he's at, he wants you down, he wants you sad, you know, he wants you to be depressed, you know, but if you're just full of joy, it's amazing how God will use that 
and he'll just work some things out with his favor and his presence. Praise the Lord. Amen. And let him infuse some inner strength into you today. Amen. My, he says, now, my beloved ones, I have saved the most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with the strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in you and through you. Amen. So he, he's saying that when you get infused, it's going to be in you and it's going to flow out to other people. Amen. I remember when I was in high school, I'll never forget. And I had a, a girlfriend and she was working at work, you know, and she worked with this Christian lady. I wasn't living for God at the time, you know, and this lady definitely wasn't living for God. And she would go to work at this hamburger place. I'll never forget. And uh, man, she'd come back every time she'd go to work. She'd be, man, there's this girl that's a Christian there and she's just so happy. Oh, she says she just overflows. She's so happy. It got on her nerves. I can tell it just got on her nerves that this lady was so happy. You know, you can tell she's been infused with his inner strength. Amen. But it was it was affecting people that, you know, needed the Lord in their lives. You know, it was affecting my girlfriend at the time in high school. You know, you think about that, you know, it was affecting her, just the joy of the Lord, you know, and just you walking in joy, you know, around other people and you being infused with this strength, this explosive power. You know, you walking around other people, it affects them. Remember Peter walking by in his shadow? I believe that represented the presence of God. He'd been spending time with the Lord, uh, you know, how he'd spent time with the Lord and it was overflowing on him. Amen. And I believe he just, his shadow would go by and people get healed. Amen. In the streets, you know, think about that. You know, just you walking by, people can get affected if you're spending time in his presence and living with the Lord. Amen. You affect people around you. It surprise you if you just take a little time with him and bask in his presence. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In the 11th verse, he says, put on God's complete set of armor. And we've been talking about this. You've got to be prepared for this spiritual battle. Amen. And what, spending time in his presence is what they're telling you to start out with right there. Amen. You know, before you put the armor on and you get yourself complete, you need to spend some time with him. Amen. That means before you start your day, you got to get up and spend some time with him. Amen. You just don't sleep and then just get up and attack your day. You, you get up and spend a little time with him. I try to do that every day. I like to spend some time in his presence. Amen. And you'll get some direction. Amen. But you, you've got that power for your day. And it's not just your ability. It's his ability to help you through your day. Amen. You need to take time that. Now, this is before you put on the armor. You need to make sure you're getting that ability of God on you for your day. Amen. His ability on your ability, you can do a lot of things. Look at what his ability did for people in the Old Testament. And look what he's done for people in the New Testament with his ability to help them, you know, from different per people. You know, Peter, you know, um, he denied Jesus three times. Wow. Wasn't a bold person, right? Didn't have a lot of confidence. Couldn't, I mean, you think about that. He was one of the most unconfident people you ever met. <laughs> you know, he wouldn't stick up for Jesus, wouldn't stick up for what he believed in. I don't believe that was his heart. I believe he wanted to stick up for Jesus. I believe he wanted to let people know that he loved the Lord, you know, but he, he said before the cock strikes three, you're going to deny me three times. And what did he do? He denied Jesus three times. But when the book of Acts, the second chapter, when he got the ability of God on his ability, when he got his ability on him, he was able to do things boldly. He had confidence and security, and he was living in God's presence, you know, because of the ability of God. This happened right after where thousands of people got saved right away from a message he gave. <laughs> Think about that, you know. So he was so bold, he, attacked, attacked, he helped thousands of people right after he got the ability of God on his life. Amen. And, you know, your ability of God in your life, you're going to affect more people. You're going to have confidence affect more people. Amen. You're going to be able to touch more people when you get the ability of God flowing in your life. Amen. You've got to spend time with him and get his ability on you. Amen. The 11th verse says, put on God's complete set of armor. So that's just one thing, living in his presence, but you need to put on the full armor. And we're going to be talking about a specific part of the armor and uh, that's what we're talking about today. Just talking a little bit, kind of getting a little bit into the subject today. But uh, put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. So there is a fight and you're going to have to fight. Amen. If you don't have some fight in you, amen, you probably, you're not going to be, you're not going to live your, a great Christian life that you want to live. Amen. You're not going to have a great impact on people in the world 
because you got to have some fight in you. Amen. Yeah, you're going to take some hits. You're going to get knocked down once in a while, but it's what you do when you're down that has a lot to do with what you're going to do with your life. Amen. You know, are you going to get back up? Amen. You know, has the enemy taken you down today? You know, I mean, sometimes you take some strong hits. I was, I was playing a, a, a video game. My son's got a new virtual reality game that we play. And uh, me and my wife and my son were in the living room last night. And uh, we, uh, we were trying the demo for it. We're hopeful we'll buy it real quick here. Uh, but we were trying, we just got this machine, this machine here. It's a virtual reality machine. And then one of the things we wanted to play was the boxing game. <laughs> And uh, we put this headset on, you know, I hadn't done much virtual uh, virtual reality stuff. So I was like, wow, okay. And uh, man, all of a sudden I'm in the ring <laughs> and there's a big man coming after me and it looks real. I'm like, I'm, I'm about to get pounced here, you know? <laughs> so I start swinging like crazy, you know, and you're swinging in the air, you know, virtually, you know, but I'm swinging like crazy, you know, I hear them laughing at me, my wife and my son, you know, because I'm swinging for my life here, you know, praise the Lord, but it looked real. And, you know, I'm like swinging. I'm like, you're not going to take me down. I knocked him down one time, you know, and first fight, you know, and I'm just swinging, swinging, swinging. Because I, I mean, he didn't have a chance. I'm swinging as fast as I can. <laughs> Praise the Lord, you know, in this game, you know. But, you know, when you get, and then I got knocked down, you know. And what do you do when you're knocked down? Do you get back up or are you just going to sit there and let them count you out? Hey, man, are you, are you, are you going to win the thing? Or are you going to just let them count you out, you know? I remember, boy, I was like, I'm working my way, you know, back over there, getting myself back up, you know, praise the Lord, you know, because I don't believe in defeat. I don't believe in quit. Amen. My family doesn't believe that way. They know that about me. We don't believe in that. You know, we don't believe in quit. We don't believe in giving up. And you need to take that out of your vocabulary. Amen. If that's a problem that you're having today, you don't believe in quit. You don't believe in giving up. It doesn't matter if you've been knocked down. Let the Lord help you. Help him. Let him infuse inner strength in you today so you can get back up. Praise the Lord. Don't try to do this on your own. You can't walk this Christian walk by yourself. Praise the Lord. You need him to help you. Amen. You need his strength to help you. You know, he didn't expect you to do this by yourself. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit to help you. The Bible even calls him your helper. He's your standby. Amen. And enemy, boy, he doesn't like the presence of God. Boy, look at Luke 4. As soon as he told everybody he was anointed with the spirit of the Lord. And, and Luke 4, man, the demons, they screamed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, you know, that's why you need to have the ability of God to fulfill your purpose. He's infusing some of you right now. Even while I'm talking, he's infusing some of you with inner strength right now. You know, some of you, he's taking you to the floor. He's taking you to the mat and he's giving you his knockout punch. You know, and they're, they're, there's a man over you right now just saying, well, actually the devil saying one, two, three. He's, he's trying to get to 10. He's hoping you don't get back up, you know. Well, you know, you've got to get back up. Amen. You know, you don't realize how much your life's impacting. You say, well, I live by myself and, and no one ever sees me, you know. No, you're, you're affecting somebody. Amen. And you being down on the ground, you're representing Jesus. You know, Jesus, you know, went to the cross and he fulfilled his purpose and he's a champion achiever. You know, he, he fulfilled everything he was supposed to fulfill here on this earth. And he wants you to fulfill whatever you have on this earth. Don't let the devil get the last laugh at you. You get up, praise the Lord. And Jesus' blood was shed for you to be always triumph through Christ Jesus. Amen. Like Paul said, he, he shed his blood that you would win every time. You should always triumph through Christ Jesus. He gave you the ability of God to fulfill your purpose. Amen. He gave you the full armor of God to fulfill your purpose. And he put himself within you. Amen. To fulfill your purpose. Praise the Lord. And so he didn't mean for you to stay on the ground. Amen. He knew you're going to get some shots. You're going to get hit once in a while but you got to get back up and fulfill what God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. We're supposed to be achievers and achieve our dreams and goals. Amen. Amen. I remember this story about this gentleman who was, he was, uh, in, I'm trying to remember the name of the movie, but he was right on this bicycle and he, he was in a race for, he was trying to fulfill his purpose, you know, and he was going and going and going, set his pace, you know, trying to win. And then he got bumped and he got knocked off into the grass. And he had a choice there. Now he can sit in the grass, whine and cry and, and say, dear Lord, why'd you let this happen to me? <laughs> 
God, I can't believe you allowed this to happen to me. And I, I don't know how I could fulfill my dream. I, I don't know how I could fulfill my goal. Or he can get back up. Amen. And he can get on with the race and fulfill what God has called him to do. Paul said that he was trying to reach for the prize, the high calling of Christ Jesus. Amen. You don't think Paul had some setbacks? <laughs> Man, you talk about it. You know, there's a whole list of setbacks that he had. He had a ship go go down. <laughs> he was beat on. You know, he he, he man, I tell you, he he, he took se several beatings. He took he went through all kinds of challenges. But, but the thing about Paul that left a, left his legacy, even when he was in prison, and they thought they had him. He still wrote two thirds of the New Testament. He still fulfilled what God had on his mind, his purpose for him. And what are you going to do today? Amen. You know, our, our, our the great achievers, the, the heroes of faith, those weren't people that just gave up and quit. Amen. These are people that fulfilled what God had for their lives. Amen. And you need to be one of those. Amen. They're up there sitting. The Bible talks about that. There's, they're up there watching. There's a cloud of witnesses watching right now. And they're watching you. You're going to be a person that just sits in the grass a person that doesn't get back up, a person that, does, that says, well, hey, I, I've had enough. I can't take no more. You know, I, I can't fulfill my purpose for you. Are you going to be a person that gets up with God's Holy Spirit infusing power in you and you fulfill what God has for your life? Amen. What are you going to do today? Amen. That's the question I'm asking you today. What are you going to do? Amen. You've got everything to fulfill this life and this, this dreams and and to fulfill that purpose that God's given you. He's given you everything. Amen. He, he's paid the price for you to have healing. He's paid the price for you to be prosperous. He's paid the price for you to, to be righteous through Christ Jesus, which we're trying to talk about today, but the Lord's leading me a little bit different today. He's paid everything for you to be a son, an adopted son in the family of God. What are you going to do today? Amen. Are you, are you going to fulfill your purpose? Are you I remember the gentleman got back up and he went and you, he won the race because he got back up. He didn't give up. Amen. Are you going to get back up? Are you going to win that race? Are you going to be someone that just sits on, on the sides and, and cries, you know, and then says, I can't fulfill what God has for my life. Amen. You've got to overcome your feelings and your emotions. Praise the Lord to fulfill what God has for your life. Because you have to get into his presence. You have to spend time with him. Amen. He's the greatest thing that's in your life. And you have to spend time with him. And he wants to fix all your wrongs. He wants to fix all the challenges. He wants to heal the hurts. You know, I'm sure when that person was knocked out, you know, of the race and they went off into the grass, you know, I'm sure they had some cuts, some bruises, some hurts, you know, praise the Lord. But God comes to heal those things. Amen. You know, and a hurt doesn't always heal right away. You know, I mean, they put a bandaid on it and it heals the body heals it, you know, and some spiritual hurts. Sometimes they take a little bit, you know, but you, you need to let God tend to that, that hurt and that pain that you've dealt with in your life. Let him tend to it so you can get healed and go forward. Amen. Looking back doesn't help, you know, Look forward to what God's called you to do and let him heal the hurts. He'll, he'll heal them in special ways and unusual ways if you let him do it. Amen. Amen. He may send somebody. You may have lost a friend or you may have lost somebody, you know, but he'll send somebody else into your path to encourage you, someone to help you fulfill your purpose. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because he's God and he loves you and he, he knew you were going to have a challenge before you got there. Amen. He knew you were going to deal with what you're dealing with before you got there. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. And he knew before you got there that you're going to have a challenge. Amen. But he wanted you, he, he didn't want for you to stop in the middle of that challenge. He wanted you to achieve the goals that you had because he put the things within you to fulfill that purpose. Amen. He put the things in you to help you achieve your goals, you know, praise the Lord. You know, if you're playing golf, you know, and I played some golf, you know, it's amazing how different instruments help you get to where you need to, what you need to do to get to the hole. You know, you got your putter, you got your different clubs that you use, you know, and different things. So you can get, get to the hole and, and get as many less strokes as you can get, you know, to get there, you know, and God gave you the things you need to fulfill your purpose and to have a good final outcome. Praise the Lord. He didn't leave any lack. Matter of fact, if you look up that word saved, it's a huge word. 
He made you whole. He took care of what you needed, praise the Lord. Look that word up sometimes. He put everything within that that you needed for this life, praise the Lord. Now, if you don't have it, is that God's fault? No, it's it, it would be our fault for not tapping into what he's given us. Amen. It would be our fault for not taking time and getting into what he's given us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because if you tap it, you're going to have more than what you need. If you tap whatever he's given you, you're going to have more than what you need because he's a good God. Amen. Amen. All that's in the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we're trying to get through here. We're just talking a little bit about righteousness. Praise the Lord today. He says here, hi. These principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms, for they are a powerful class of demon gods, evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. You know, that's another thing, too. You know, you can live in bondage. You can live in challenges. You can live in all those things. You can do it. Or you can spend time in his presence. Amen. And get rid of it. Amen. You can do it or you can you, you can do whatever you want to do. Amen. But you need if you want to fulfill your purpose, you're going to have to get rid of that bondage. You're going to have to drop that stuff off in his presence. Amen. You're going to have to let him deal with that with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. That means you need to spend some time with him. Spend some time letting him free you in some areas. Spend some time letting, letting his presence free you in some areas. There's some things you don't even understand, and you need to get in his presence so that he can fix them for you. Amen. He does understand. He knows all things. Amen. God knows everything, and he knows what you need more than you know what you need, and you need to spend some time in his presence so he can fix those things that have been causing challenges for you in your life. Amen. Amen. So it's important that each of us as believers understand there is a war in the heavens going on. Amen. Now we can be people that are that are in this war and we just we sit this thing out and we sit over to the side, or we can be people that put on the armor of God and fulfill what God has called us to do today. Amen. Amen. You know, and you know that that you putting on the armor and you you doing the things you need to do each morning. That's going to have a dramatic impact on people around you. Amen. It's going to have a dramatic impact on the world if you let it happen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And his ability on your ability can change the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's important that we understand we're to wear spiritual armor for a reason. God's given us that for a reason because there is a real devil out there. John 10, 10 says, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. We have a whole message on that, about that word abundantly. You should look that up. That's a powerful word. It doesn't mean just abundantly. It means to the max, to the overflow. Listen to the Passion Translation of that scripture. It says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy, but I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, Life in its fullness until you overflow. That sounds like the prophecy for this year. He wants you to overflow, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that's what God wants for you. But it's, you have to understand this is the enemy's character. He's coming to steal, to kill, and destroy. So you need to be aware, you know. I remember talking to my wife, you know. I was like, well, hey, if you're alone in a parking lot, make sure that you're looking all around, especially in dark. Make sure you're looking around your preference and seeing where people are, you know. You know, make sure you're looking around what's going on around you, you know, and it's important. You know, we got spiritual people who just don't believe there's a real enemy out there. We have some people who don't believe there's a devil. People who don't believe there's a hell out there, you know, but there's a real hell and there's a real devil. You know, read your Bible. Amen. There's a real enemy. I just read to you about Satan there, you know, but there's a real devil and there's a real hell. And it's important that you're being aware of what's going on around you. Amen. You know, sometimes you need to take authority. You know, you may sense in the spirit that some things are going on and you need to say, devil, get out of here. Is this name? Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee. Amen. One translation says, live in, he'll run in terror. <laughs> Amen. Take authority over the enemy in your situation. Amen. Or you can just sit there and listen to him all day. You know, remember Eve in the garden? She just sat there and listened to him. You know, and some people, they'll just sit there and let him talk all day. You know, what is he trying to do? He's trying to build you faith in the wrong things. You know, we've been talking about faith on Sundays and what it is. And he's trying to persuade you of wrong things. Amen. In your life. He wants to persuade you that you're a loser. <laughs> he wants to persuade you that you're not ever going to get where you need to go. He wants to persuade you, you know, because he's a liar, you know. 
and he wants to persuade you, that, you know, God doesn't care about you. Your family doesn't care about you. Your dog don't even care about you. You know, the devil would love to make you think even your dog don't even care about you. <laughs> you know, praise the Lord. But, but you know, God, he, he's come to give you life. What, is, what do we read there? He says he's given everything in abundance to the more than you expect life in its fullness until you overflow. Amen. He doesn't want you hearing about that. Amen. He wants you to think, well, man, you're going to have trouble getting a job and you're going to have trouble fulfilling your purpose and you're going to have trouble, you know, getting this next sale and that your business isn't going to do good. And, and you know, you're, you're going to have challenges, whatever you do, you know, but God wants you to know it's going to overflow. Amen. As long as you're with him, it's going to overflow and you're going to have a good year this year. You're going to have a wonderful year this year. But remember the enemy is trying to persuade you. He wants to lie to you. And he wants to get you thinking about the wrong things. There's a real war going on. Amen. He can't make you do anything. Amen. But he, there is a war going on. Amen. And it's a war of words. Amen. He's trying to speak the things to you. And God's trying to speak some things to you. And God's telling you the truth. You know, and you need to decide if it's not good, it's not God. Amen. And God is trying to give you good things and get you in the right direction. Amen. John 10.10, 10, the translation there that we read there says he gives you life in his fullness until you overflow. Amen. Amen. I, I read that last version to you so you realize the seriousness that's going on in the spirit. Amen. He come, notice it says there he wants to steal, to slaughter, and to destroy. Some strong words. But the enemy doesn't, he doesn't want good things for you. Amen. He doesn't want you to achieve the, your dreams and your goals. So he, know he, has, he knows he has a set time before he's cast into the pit. And he wants to discourage you and keep you from fulfilling your purpose and as many people as he can from fulfilling their purpose before his time. You know, even the demons said, you come to you come to give us trouble before the time, basically paraphrasing it there for Jesus, because they even know there's a set time. Amen. And you need to think about that today. You're in that set time. What are you going to do in this set time that God's put before you today? Are you going to do what God's put on your heart? Are you going to do what you want to do? Amen. And God's got a whole lot of people he's trying to affect through you, trying to help other people through you. Amen. Or are you going to do what you want to do? Amen. I tell you, man, we have to be careful about being selfish. Amen. There's a whole lot of people out there that can be blessed if we'll do what God tells us to do. Amen. Now, Jesus has defeated the enemy. It's important that we realize that, but he's instructed us to put on God's armor. And we're going to talk about a little bit more about the armor there. John, Ephesians 6, 11 there, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. It says, wherefore, take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. He's telling you, if you don't have this armor on, you're not going to be able to stand in the evil day to stand. You're not going to be able to stand where you're at. You're just going to, you're going to go down. You've got to be able to stand where you're at and stand your ground. Amen. Stand your ground. I remember when I was in middle school, I'll never forget that we'd play on recess. We'd play some football, you know, and uh, I'll never forget. I had some glasses. I was kind of a chubby kid with glasses and my mama would tape my glasses up for me, you know, <laughs> because I play football at lunch, you know, and uh, they give the ball to me, you know, or I'm, boy, I'm, we tried to win, man. And we didn't have pads back then. We didn't have anything, but boy, we just go after each other, you know. This is some time ago, you know. I'm uh, right now. I'm 46, so you can imagine what it was like when I was younger. We we didn't care about pads. We didn't, you know, <laughs> we didn't care about any of that stuff when I was younger. But I'll never forget one time I went for a touchdown, you know. And I, I took all, you know, I, everybody was on me, you know, but I was a big kid, you know, and I carried everybody that was on me all the way to the, the touchdown where we had it, you know, holding the ball, you know, they gave me the ball and I carried them all the way to the touchdown, you know, and, you know, you've got to stand your ground against the enemy, you know, he may be throwing everything he's got at you today, every challenge he's got at you, praise the Lord. But you can see if you're focused and you're determined, you're going to fulfill what God's got in your, for your life, praise the Lord. Amen. Carry it to the touchdown. 
carry whatever you're dealing with, you know, get in his presence and get those things out of your life, but be able to go to where you're going, be able to focus, have that focus where you're going to get where you need to go, no matter what's coming at you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll never forget my little glasses, you know, then I'd get home and mama would have to tape them back up, you know, you know, and I'd you know, want to go play again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, back then, you know, it was like $600 for a pair of glasses. You know, we were looking the other day. I mean, man, you can get them for like $20 today, you know, but man, mama wouldn't be happy with me breaking my glasses, you know, and have to come get the tape out, you know, and man, it didn't look so good. You know, I had striped shirts. I was kind of big. And then I also had the taped up glasses. So that I looked, it didn't make me look good. You know, praise the Lord. When I had the taped up glasses, you know, amen. <laughs> amen. I don't know why I threw that in there, but that's for some of you. Praise the Lord. But anyway, stand with your loins girded about the truth and heaven on the breastplate of righteousness. That's what we're going to be talking about is the breastplate of righteousness. Now, this is important that you understand about the breastplate of righteousness. You know, the Old Testament, the breastplate was kind of interesting. It was made of many different pieces because they would shoot darts at you, you know, and that was their weapons that they had. So it wasn't a solid piece in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, they, uh, they made the surface. They made it, of course, they made it out of big, they made big metal vests and they were solid vests, you know, because they knew that the, that that vest protected you, your internal organs, your heart, and the most important things to your body. So they made that that vest strong. You know, they may have had some legs that were showing or something like that. You know, but they made sure that vest was strong. And the reason why is because at the at the time that this was being written in Ephesians, they had swords. You know, and they knew. They could stab, you know, it wasn't like before in the Old Testament, they were just shooting arrows at you. They, they would try to stab you in the heart, you know, so they knew that that breastplate had to be strong. Amen. It's going to protect your vital organs and it's important that it's strong, you know, and it's a very important part. And why would Paul use that part to describe righteousness? Well, he was saying that, you know, you can be easily taken down if you don't understand righteousness. Amen. Easily taken down. And so it's important that we understand that the breastplate of the protects your vital organs. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be looking at that a little bit and talking about righteousness there. I remember um, when I was watching the movie Back to the Future, I'm a big Back to the Future fan. I know some of you may not agree with that, but I like Back to the Future. And I like that movie quite a lot. And I uh, like Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3, you know. The third one, I'm, and that was an interesting thing happened in that one. I'll never forget. He's, he's going against uh, Mad Dog Tannen, you know, in the third one. And, uh, you know, he's supposed to meet Mad Dog Tannen at some point in this one. They were supposed to have a gunfight. He, he wasn't happy with Marty. <laughs> and he wanted to have a gunfight with Marty, you know. And I'll never forget, you know, Mad Dog Tannen, you know, he said, we're going to meet, you know, at, at a certain time in the morning, you know. And so they said, okay, we're going we're gonna to meet and we'll, we're going to face off, you know. Back then, you know, they would face off with guns, you know. And so he was going to meet Mad Dog Tannen. Well, you know, Marty gets up that morning, you know, and they had some things happen, and and he he doesn't want to face Mad Dog Tannen. He was he was he was wanting to do some. He's trying to get back in time, you know. I'm trying not to tell the whole story because it could be quite a long story here. But he he takes the back door, and he goes out the back door, and he sees that there's a chimney door back there that fell off of a fireplace, and he goes to face Mad Dog Tannen. And he decides he's going to go out there, you know, and and he, he 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 takes off his gun belt and thinking that Mad Dog Tannen would fight him, and Mad Dog Tannen just go ahead, goes right ahead and shoots at him. And uh, when he shoots at him, it bounces off that armor he put underneath to protect his vital organs. <laughs> he used that steel arm and put that steel under there, and he used a little rope to protect his vital organs. You know, in that movie. It's very interesting, you know, that he used that. And then the Mad Dog comes down there and he fakes that he's dead and he and then uh, Mad Dog comes down there to look at him and he's laughing at him, you know, and then he he stands up and he's alive and he's like, wow, and he tries to swing at him and he hits him right there in that armor, you know, and he hurts his hand because that steel thing was underneath his clothes, you know, and it was protecting his vital organs. That breastplate is to protect your vital organs. Amen. It's to protect your life. Amen. And it's important that you understand that because the enemy likes to get you into works. We're going to be talking about that. He likes to get you into all kinds of things to wear you out. He likes to get you into things that you don't need to be doing because if you don't understand righteousness, you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing in this Christian walk. And it's important that you understand righteousness. And, and if you don't understand righteousness, you don't know who you really are. Amen. 
you don't understand your what God's called you to do and well, the purpose that He has for your life, you don't understand where you fit on that on that uh, on that stage of life. You don't understand where your place is, and so it's important that you understand righteousness. Amen. And we're going to talk about these things. Amen. Righteousness is supposed to protect you from the enemy's fatal blows. Amen. So if you're having you're getting fatal blows, you want to stay with this series, praise the Lord, so that God can teach you how to handle fatal blows. And this is one thing that will help you when he's trying to do fatal blows with you, trying to take you out, praise the Lord. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what righteousness is. We're going to talk about uh, righteousness and works, the difference. And we're going to be talking about unrighteousness. Amen. And it's going to be important that you hear all of it. Amen. I believe it'll help you a whole lot and it'll strengthen you as a believer. Amen. We're really just talking about the subject today. But I'll give you an example here of how it's important to understand righteousness. I'll never forget. Um, I was uh, working in a, a store and I didn't have a firm grasp of what righteousness is. And, uh, you know, I was doing everything I could to please the Lord. You know, matter of fact, I remember my dad talking about he owned a sub shop and he had these uh, people that were of a different religion there and they were doing and their religion based it upon works and how everything had to be done. If it wasn't done perfectly, then, you know, they felt like God wasn't pleased with them. And uh, I'll never forget, you know, they would, man, they were some of the best workers you ever had, you know, because they wanted to please God, you know, the best they could, you know, but they believed it was by their works. Amen. And uh, so they would, man, my dad, he loved having them working for his shop. Well, I'll never forget, you know, I was, uh, I had challenges with this. And uh, I was, I'll never forget, I was cleaning the store, which was, this was a very, very large uh, st store that I was working at. And I felt like I had to get every corner clean. I had to make sure that every little niche was clean or God wasn't happy with me. I had to make sure that I had uh, every area fixed or God wasn't happy with me. I'd have long nights, you know, and get stressed, you know, because I'm trying to please the Lord. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, but I was doing it, I'm going after it by works, you know, and the enemy likes to use that. He likes to use it and put you in bondage if you're not if you don't understand righteousness. You know, you're trying to do good things for God and you love God and you're trying to fulfill your purpose for God, but he's he always likes to make you feel like you haven't done a good enough job. <laughs> and that's why this subject's so important to people. Amen. He makes you feel like, well, you you failed, you're never gonna achieve what God has achieved. He's mad at you now. He wants you to understand that he wants you to feel like you're never going to measure up no matter what you do, you know. So it's important that you understand righteousness. Amen. Yeah, and we're going to talk about these things. But, you know, you don't want to be in bondage. You don't want to be in a bondage where you never feel like you can fulfill what God has for you. And we're going to talk about some things. I believe some people are going to get free, praise the Lord, just by hearing more about righteousness. Amen. So we need to understand righteousness. We need to understand we're not just a sinner saved by grace. That's always thrown around in Christian circles. And, uh, you know, we are sinners that were saved by grace, praise the Lord. But you're not, you're no longer a sinner. Amen. And that shouldn't be the th emphasis, you know, the emphasis should be that you're saved by grace. Amen. You're not just an old sinner. Praise the Lord. You, you're the righteousness in Christ Jesus now, praise the Lord. And that should be the focus that God has for you. He don't want you thinking that you're just some old sinner. And some people like to put their minds back with that. They like to wrap their minds around that. And uh, they use it as an excuse that they're, you know, that they're never going to fulfill their purpose, you know, perfectly. You know, uh, one of the things they love to say is, I'm not perfect, <laughs> you know, you know, but the truth is God made you righteous. And we're going to talk more about that. The emphasis should be, you know, on God's righteousness in your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're not supposed to be focused on being just old sinners. We should be focused on who we are now in Christ Jesus. And we're going to talk about those things. Romans 3.22 says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all of them that believe for their is no difference. Amen. So there's a righteousness by faith, and we're going to be talking about that. So, you know, we've been talking about faith on Sundays, and it's a persuasion. It's a firm persuasion. It's a belief. It's a conviction on based on what you heard. Amen. And, you know, you're going to be hearing some things, and I'm going to persuade you about righteousness. That's going to be my goal the next few weeks. I'm going to persuade you that you are righteous through Christ Jesus. You're going to understand righteousness like you've never understood it before, praise the Lord, because I'm going to hit you from every angle. And, uh, you know, you're going to understand it like you never understood it before. Romans 3.22 says the righteous, this righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all those Jew and Gentile who believe. 
and trust in him and acknowledge him as God's son, there is no distinction. Amen. Amen. He, he's paid this righteousness for everybody. Amen. He's paid it for the whole world if they'll accept Jesus. You know, the first chapter of John talks about how he died for the whole world, not just for just for Christians. He died for everybody in the world. And he's working on those people that are still in the world because he's got some special things for them. We're going to talk about this. When you understand righteousness, you become more of a secure Christian. And that's my goal today. Is I want to, or, or Over the next few weeks, I want you to be more of a secure Christian. The more secure you are, the more you can help other people. Look at Peter's life and look at more secure he was, how he could affect other people. Amen. And you know, it's important that you're secure. It doesn't mean that we're haughty or we're people that are rude or we're people that are not walking in love, but we're secure in him. Amen. Secure in what God has called us to be. Amen. And you're going to understand that more as you understand who you are in righteousness. Praise the Lord. Romans 3.22 says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe there is no difference. Amen. So this is a righteousness by faith. Amen. The righteousness that you're persuaded of, amen, a righteousness, it's a belief, amen, that's how righteousness is supposed to be in your life, you're persuaded about it, because that's what Jesus has paid for, amen, and we're going to talk about Abraham, he he was counted righteous, and you were counted righteous, so we're going to talk about that, and I'm going to persuade you over the next few weeks, so you're going to have some faith in righteousness, to, to have it in your life, amen, amen, I'll tell you what to make you a different person to understand this subject, and I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. So I'm going to be persuading you of it. And it's important that you're confident and secure being a Christian. Praise the Lord. Amen. The devil don't want you to be confident. He doesn't want you to be secure. Amen. Matter of fact, when I say those words, I know there's people who just can't stand it. But God, that's because the enemy wants you to think you shouldn't be confident and secure. But God wants you to be confident and secure in him. And where it comes from and where it starts is knowing what righteousness is. Amen. And it's going to protect you from the enemy's onslaught in your life. Ephesians 1.5 says, Having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Amen. So you're born into his family. Amen. And it's important that you understand what that means. Romans 8.14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen need to know more about who we are. Amen. Romans 8, 19 says it like this, for the earnest expectation of the creations waiters for the manifestations of the sons of God. They want to see you being God's adopted child in the earth. Amen. They want to see you manifested in your purpose and in your dream. Everybody's waiting to see it. Amen. We got witnesses up here waiting to see it. All creations waiting to see it. They want to see you fulfilling what God has you to do, amen, and and you being secure in that, amen, not somebody just going, I'm just a loser, <laughs> I'm just, oh man, I, I'll ne- I'm, just, uh, I'm not at all amount to nothing, no, Jesus made you amount to something, amen, and we're going to be talking about that, he made you amount to something, and when you say that you don't amount to something, you're saying his blood didn't mean nothing, you need to realize his blood meant something very important, And it's important that you understand righteousness, praise the Lord. And we're going to be talking about that. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy today, Father. And Father, we just lift up these people to you today, Father, as we get into righteousness, Lord. Take the blinds off of people. Help them, Lord, to see it more clearly as we get into these weeks, these next few weeks of study and righteousness, Father. Help those that are needing encouragement to be encouraged today, Father. Infuse those that need strength to be infused with power right now, Father. We pray in Jesus' name, Lord. Help them to get up. Lord, help them to get up by your Holy Spirit, Lord. I I thank you, Lord. Anytime you get knocked down, the Holy Spirit's there to help us get up. He's our helper. And, Father, we help them get up and fulfill their dream and purpose for you, Father, we pray. And, Father, we just thank you, Father, for it. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for it in Jesus name. Amen. We just thank you, Father. There's another one devil that you didn't keep down. There's another one devil that you you didn't let them stay that they can't, they're not going to stay in the grass. They're going to fulfill what God has for their life. And we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus name. You're just making the devil eat it today. And we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus name. And and if there's somebody today you don't know Jesus and you want to know Jesus. Amen. You want a personal relationship with God today. 
and that's through Jesus Christ. And you just need to pray this with me today. Romans, uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess the Lord Jesus and believe God has raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. So what you need to do is just pray this prayer with me. If you'd like to be saved, we'll, we're going to pray for you right now. Just repeat this after me. Father, I just believe that Jesus was risen from the dead. And Father, I just confess Jesus as Lord of my life today. Jesus be Lord of my life. I ask that you do that for me today in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for it in advance right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank you, Father. Thank you for those that are saved today. We thank you, Father. Well, if you prayed that prayer today, you're in the family. Amen. We're so glad to have you. And we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to hear your story. Just email us at jeremiasministries at yahoo.com. Let us know what's going on. We love you a whole bunch. Let us know so we can pray for you. Amen. And just let us know so we can be a blessing to you. We'd like to send some encouraging words your way. Praise the Lord. Well, we love you. God bless you, every one of you. I hope to see you next Sunday. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.